Tell them you are more than that. More than that. I want you to look at verse 1. Listen what the writer says. He says, listen. Pay attention. O owls unto me, and hearken ye people from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. Stop right there. Because Salem, I want you to understand that this is much as an individual assignment as it is a corporate assignment. I want you to hear this. That, that, that although he's talking to an audience of one this morning, he's talking to us corporately, but also to you individually. Are y'all hearing me this morning? So therefore, he says, listen, owls. Now that word owls is in representative of the word island. And so then when you think about an island, an island, uh, it, it brings to mind, or he's making reference to people, because he says, hearken ye people from afar, that he's making reference to people who are isolated. Sister Shelton, they are cut off, they are far off. He's referring to those people that may feel separated or away from God. Because make no mistake, an island is surrounded by water. And so then there, there are those that feel like they are surrounded by trouble. They're, they're surrounded by misery. They're surrounded by pain. In fact, there are those that even feel like there's no hope. Because regardless of whichever direction you look, you still see the same thing. Yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Because if you're on an island, no matter Tory, if you look to the left or the right, you're going to see water. If, if you go to the other side of the island, you still don't see water. If, if you wait 10 days later, you still see water. If, if you get up in the morning, you still see water. If you wait till the sun goes down, you still see water. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? And so then he uses that term because even as an owl, an island, you may feel secluded. You may feel detached. You might even feel like you have been quarantined. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. And so even as, as beautiful as an island can be, it is cut off from everyone and everything. You know, the poet John Donne said, no man is an island of himself. And so then, yet we feel like the writer here, as he's being told, listen, O Isles. And, and so then the island, which was supposed to be, watch this, instead of it being a hangout, it has become a holdup. Uh, what was supposed to be a place of refuge has become a place of rejection and refusal. Instead of it being a resort, it's now a place of resentment. To the point where you're now saying, why did I marry you? Mm, oh my God. Uh, it was supposed to be a sanctuary, but now it's been turned into an asylum. Because you got crazy people saying crazy things to you. You, you got people doing things that's crazy. And so what was supposed to be a place of sanctuary is now an asylum. It, it has become a place that makes you feel like your best days are behind you. And so then he says, listen, those of you who are in this predicament, the Lord hath called you, hath, hath called you from the womb yeah. and from the bowels of your mother. Yeah. He has made mention, he has deliberately called you by name to the point that when God called you, he didn't call you by accident. He, he didn't call you thinking of someone else when he called. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. When he called your name. And so he says, make no mistake that, that God who, who called me from my mother's womb has made mention of my name. And so then he says that not only has he called me, but verse 2 says that he's made my mouth like a sharp sword. And he says, in the shadow of his hand, he hath hid me and made me as a polished shaft. And in his quiver have he hid me. And so when you read that verse, you have to recognize that he's saying that I created you with versatility. Ooh, God, help me in this place. Uh, uh, Patrick, there, there are some athletes that, that are one-dimensional. They can only play either offense or defense, Terrell. But, but then there are some people 
people uh, whom God gives them multi-talents. Uh, and so then they're able to play on both sides of the ball. Uh, and so then what he's done is he's given them uh, multiple assignments. Watch this, say, I'm talking to us. Uh, that he gives you more than one assignment uh, because he's created you with the gifting to be able to play more than one position. And so then he said, not only has God made me like a sword, but he's also made me like an arrow. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so then he says, make no mistake that when he made me like an arrow, uh, he's put something in my mouth. Oh, God, help me in this place. Uh, he said he's given my mouth and made my mouth like a sword. Uh, are y'all hearing me in this place? But, but not only that, he says that as a sword, it's because I have something in my mouth. Uh, and when I open the word that comes out of my mouth, it's like a two-edged sword. Uh, it's going to cut going in, but it's going to also cut coming out. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So he says he's not only made me like this sword, but he's also made me as an arrow. He's made me as a polished shaft in which I have the abilities. Now watch this. He says that I made you like this polished shaft. I've oiled you because the reason why I've oiled you is so that when I shoot you, you have the abilities to pierce deep. God, help me in this place. I'm going to say that one more time, Sean. He said, he said, I made you like this polished shaft, and I've welled all of you. In other words, I've seasoned you so that when I shoot you, you have the abilities to pierce deep. Now, make no mistake, one might ask Jamie, well, I thought the sword could pierce deep deep. What's the difference in the sword piercing and the arrow piercing? Well, the purpose of the arrow and the purpose of the sword are different. The purpose of the sword is that I have to pierce you when you're in close proximity. Oh God, help me in this place. Oh, in other words, Sister Ida, the sword lets me release a word right now. But when I need you and release a word for in your future, huh, then I have to shoot this arrow huh, because the arrow is going to travel distance. Huh, it's going to travel into your future. Huh, and so then there's a time, watch this Salem, huh, when God is going to release a word for right now. Huh, when the, we're in close proximity huh, of what God has for us to do. Huh, but then, Sister Bobby, huh, there's going to come a time huh, that there's going to be a word in my mouth huh, that God that won't be for right now. Huh? That won't be for 2014. Huh? But Mario is going to be for 2015. Huh? But make no mistake, huh? when it shoots, huh? when it's released, huh? it's not just going to go into January, huh? but it's going to go through February. Huh? It's not just going to stop in March, huh? but it's going to go through May. Huh? It's going to go through June. Huh? It's not just going to stop when it gets hot, huh? but it's going to show Yes, yes, God has put a word. He's given us that versatility. He, he's given us that, that uh, capability, Jamie, that we can do more than that. Well, some people can't walk and chew gum. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. They, they mess up. They have to do one or the other. But there's some people that, that God intrinsically deposits something more than what he gives to others. Even Paul says that. Corinthians, when he talks about the diversity of the gifts. Now all of us are created with the same thing. We are created equal in our makeup. But there's a difference in our purpose. So then he says that, uh, make no mistake that I've created you. And I made you like a sword. Mm -hmm, in my hand and I made you like an arrow a polished shaft in my quiver now watch this saints of God 
His hand protects the sword. That's why he said the sword is hid in the hand. The arrows are hid in his quiver. Watch this now. The, the sword or the hand is protected by God himself. The quiver is the God's purpose for your life. And so then you're protected, watch this, by God's purpose over your life. And so that when God shoots you, when God releases you to carry out your assignment, he's already put a protection around you that the enemy can't stop you. When God releases you to go forward, he's already protected you that, that even when he sends you a purpose that seems to be afar off, he's already tied to it. He's already assigned to it your protection. So then you don't have to be afraid to go. Because there's a time that when we're right in God's vicinity and he's holding us with his hand. And so then he doesn't release us. But then when he says, now you've reached the stage of maturity, I now can step back and release you. And I don't have to hold your hand. Because now when I send you forth, it's something in you. Because watch this. Make no mistake, when he says that the polished shaft, he says that you've been well old. Y'all missed that one right there. He says that, oh God, help me in this place, that, that you are now well on. Y'all still didn't catch it because we should say, what are you talking about? He's saying that I've now anointed you with some oil so that now when I release you, you got some power. Y'all don't hear me in this place. You got some power that when other folk will fail, you won't pierce through that thing. When other folks will stop because you got the breakers anointed, you go break through that thing. When other people will get dismayed and discouraged, but because you've been old, you won't go through some stuff. Tell your neighbor more than that. More than that. More than that. So he says, let him know, make it be known that God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He has made me like a sword, but he's also made me like a polished shaft. And so then, watch this, verse 3, he goes on to say, And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Listen what he declares. He says, Through your life, through the giftings and the abilities that I've given you, I will be glorified. He wasn't saying maybe. He wasn't saying I'm hoping on it. He's not saying I'm, I'm, I'm running the risk that just in case. No, no, no. He said, I know because how I made you, I'm going to receive some glory. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying in this place? And so then in verse 4, he says, then I said, now watch this. This is a conversation. It's a conversation, man. God has done all this thing. Look, I done called you. I done made you. Called you from your mother's womb and called you by name. I done made you like a sword. I made you like a polished shaft. Even tell you I will be glorified, which means you're going to fulfill your destiny. That's what it means. When he says, I will be glorified, that means you're going to reach the end of your destiny. But then listen what the writer says. That's why he says, then I said. After hearing all of what God said, he says, well, look, Lord, I've labored mm, in vain. I spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. So he's asking the question, God, how can you receive glory when it seems like my labor appears to be in vain? Mm, my God. How, how God can, can you receive glory 
when it seems like I'm not being effective. How, God, can you receive glory when it looks like my efforts to live right seem to be pointless and futile? How, how God, can, can, can you receive glory when it seems like I'm, I'm buffeted with so much resistance? How, how God, how, God, I'm, it, 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 it fathoms me, God, how you're going to receive this glory because when I look at myself and the things that I'm having to cope with and to deal with, I don't see how you can receive glory from me because all of my efforts and attentions are focused on trying to get out of the hole that I'm in. And so, oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. And so how can I deal, or watch this, how can I focus on ministry when my life is in turmoil? God, help me in this place. How, how, how can I focus on producing a, a CD chain and, and I got all these issues in my life? How, how can I go and minister to the nations when my bank account is funny? How, how, how God, can I go and be a servant when I got these issues in my body? And I'm so glad he says, God, how can you receive this glory when it seems like my life may have been unsuccessful? My efforts have been unsuccessful when it seems like my family misunderstands me on this hand and church folk do me wrong on that hand and, and I go to work and I'm dealing with issues and I just feel like the world is just crashing down on me God and so how can you receive glory when I can't see the break of day God how, how can you receive glory God when, when my children keep coming to me for issues and problems after problem I go to the school get this one out of trouble, then I gotta go to the jail to get that one out of trouble. God, how can you receive any glory when it seems like my prayers are only focused on my trials? Then I don't get a chance to even talk to you, Shelly, about what you want to do with my life. How, God, can you receive glory, God, when my mama is sick at home? How, God, can I receive glory on my job. God, God, how can you receive glory when my child is acting wayward? God, God, how can you receive glory when me and my husband not get it alone? God, God how can how can you receive any glory when, when all I think about day and night is uh, where is he at? Uh, who he on the phone with? Uh, who she texting? Uh, how, God, can you receive glory when it seems like the one closest to me Understands me. How can you receive glory, God? When I look in the mirror and it looks like I don't have what it takes, how can you receive glory? I know you called me here from my mother's womb, but when I look at myself, all I see here is deficiencies. All I see here is inadequacies. All I see here is neglect. All I see here is rejection. All I see here is negativity. And so how, God, can you receive glory? How can you receive glory, God, when it seems like everything I'm doing is not producing any fruit? And not only is it not producing any fruit, God, but is zapping my strength. Oh, God. It, it, it's not only that, that it, it seems like it's not producing, but God, I'm being worn out. Oh, God. Oh, help me in this place. My strength is dissipating. My, my strength is diminishing. My, my strength is decreasing. And so what used to then bother me now gets on my nerves. Uh, the stuff I used to be able to ignore now seems like it's louder. Oh God, help me in this place. Uh, and so then he says, my strength, God, is now beginning to diminish. It's beginning to diminish. And then he says, yet, yet God, yet God, yet surely, God. He's saying, yet, What's due me is you, God. 
what you gonna give me? That my reward is gonna come from you. But when I look at all my faithfulness, all my giving, all my sacrificing, all my praying, all my fasting, all my enduring, it looks like it's for nothing. Mm, mm, mm. Seems like the harder I try, the worse it gets. The more I pray, the more pain shows up in my life. And so God, he says, how can you get this glory when it seems like I'm not productive? And he responds by saying this in verse 5. And now. Hmm. So we skip over those two words. Mm -mm, but you got to stop right there. He says, and now. Mm -hmm. Now that you said what you said. Now that you've had your little pity party. Uh-huh. Now that, because watch this, it's evident Shonda that he was saying these things to try to convince God that he could not receive glory from his life. Otherwise, he never would have told him those things if he didn't believe that he could still give God glory based upon what he had expended. But what God says, now that you finished feeling sorry for yourself, because watch this. Sometimes we state the facts, but not the truth. I want you to get that. There's a difference in facts and truth. Facts and purpose don't always line up. But truth and purpose will always line up. I want y'all to hear that right there. Facts. When I say facts, we're talking about circumstances. We're talking about conditions. They don't always line up with your purpose. In fact, a lot of times they seem to cancel out your purpose. Because when you look at them, the facts seem to make you come up with the conclusion that you're not qualified, nor do you have the prerequisites to be what your purpose says you ought to be. God, let me come home to you. The fact of the matter is, we're a small church. Look around. The fact of the matter, we're out here in God's country. That's the facts. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so then you take those facts and you look at that vision statement. And you say, wait a minute. How can this small company make the world a brighter place when some of us have been out of this world oh uh, y'all missed that one right there how, how, how can we make the world a brighter place when the fact of the matter is is that we are small the, the fact of the matter is we don't have a whole lot the fact of the matter y'all don't hear what I'm saying in this place uh, uh, we're not the biggest we're not the brightest we're not the best and so then the facts don't look like it goes with the purpose but then when you go to truth help me in this place well, what is truth saying? Truth is what the word of God says. And the word of God always goes with purpose. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? Well, what does the word of God say? Because we know that the word of God is true. What the word of God says, that whom I called, I predestined. Whom I foreknew, I destined. Whom I justified, I predestined. You said, wait a minute, you got that all out. No, 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 no. The truth of the matter is that all of those things come about because God already looked into the future and already set our end at the beginning. And so the truth of the matter, when God told us, Satan, that I want you to make the world a brighter place, the truth of it is, is that God had already predestined us. God had already selected us. God had already handpicked us. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so no matter what the facts say, the truth is that God is going to put a word in us. That God is going to shoot us like an arrow. And we'll be able to minister to folk not only here in Heidelberg, not only here in Paulden, but we're going to minister to some folk in Fort Worth, Texas. We're going to minister to some folk in Hattiesburg. We're going to minister to some folk in Law. We're going to minister to some folk at the firehouse. 
And some of us allow people to use facts to talk us out of our purpose. Because we say, I don't have nothing to go against them, Shay, when they start rattling off those facts. How can I dispute when they say we small and I say, well, we, 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 we are small. How, how can I dispute when they say we out here in the country? Well, uh -huh, this is the county. <laughs> so we, we, we get tongue-tied because we try to use facts on facts. But how you refute them is that you come back with truth. How you get rid of them is you come back with the word. That when the word says, no matter what it looks like, don't let small beginnings cause you to get worried. Because my life shall be greater. My end shall be greater than my beginning. That the glory of the latter house shall be greater, shall be greater, shall be more than that of the former house. Slap your neighbor, say neighbor, we're about to be more than the former house. We're about to be greater than, we're about to be bigger than, we're about to be more than. God said, God said, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. that's why I'm arguing for me trying to tell me facts. You're right, your facts are absolutely correct. <laughs> but God gave me truth. <laughs> God gave me truth. So, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So he says, okay. and now that you've done all that, mm -hmm. make no mistake. Because Sometimes when we do these things, as we talk about in verse 4, it's because we looked at someone else and compared our life to their life. Mm, help me, Holy Ghost. And see, we don't realize, watch this, you know, since we out here in the country, we might as well use a country analogy. <laughs> You know, when during the summertime, my dad and we used to ride down to Mines, Watermelon Country, Smith County. And we used to stop and get a watermelon. And I used to go and I see my daddy thump on the watermelon. Now to me, they all looked the same. They was green with some dirt on. And so my daddy didn't look at the outside of Because the outside can look nice and pretty and dark green and still be bitter on the inside. And so then he would thump it. Mm, Y'all missed that one. He would thump it. Y'all missed it again. <laughs> he would trouble it. Mm, Y'all missed it again. He, he would shake it. Mm, Y'all, maybe let's see, let's see, let's see. He stirred up. Mm, Y'all ain't quite got it. He, he brings some affliction to it mm, to see if it would make a certain sound. And if it made a certain sound, he knew it was right. And so then, what am I saying, Shelly? Uh, that what God will do sometimes, uh, he'll thump on us. Uh, he'll allow the enemy to shake us a little bit. Uh, he'll allow affliction to stir us a little bit uh, to see what sound Mary took uh, you gonna make. If you keep complaining, you ain't right. If you keep murmuring, you ain't ready. If you keep crying, you ain't ready. If you keep nagging, you ain't fit. And so then he have to put you back and let you grow a little bit more. But then he'll come back and thump you again. And see, this time, what will you say? Do I have any witnesses that God has thumped on you? That trouble has showed up? And did you make the right response? What came out of your mouth? Did you say, for God I live and for God I die? Did you declare that I will bless the Lord at all times? Did you 
been thumped on. I've been thumped on. And to tell you the truth, I've been thumped on more than once. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. The first thumping didn't get me right. Cause I went right back. The second thumping didn't make me change. I went back again. The second thumping, the third thumping, the fourth thumping, I kept doing the Cupid Shuffle. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. But I think it was around the 250 thumping that I finally realized when I of you by name. He says, watch this, here yeah. comes assignment. Watch this. He says, I formed you from the womb to be my servant. Yes. 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 Say that one more time. Because we, got, we, we jumped over that. I formed you to serve and not be served. Y'all hear me what I'm saying? I formed you to serve, to go to the jail, to go to the hospitals, to go to the streets, to minister to people, not just sit up in these four walls. Mm -hmm. okay. He said, I formed you to be my servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Woo. I would dig into that. I ain't got time. Though Israel be not gathered, Yet shall I be glorified in the eyes of the Lord. My God shall be my strength. Watch this. He says, make no mistake. That though Israel has not been gathered yet, I'm still going to be glorified. He comes back to that again. Remember, he said that in verse 3. He comes back again to reassure him. That though some of your efforts, watch this, seem like they have not produced the sons and the daughters, that they have not produced what you desire, he says, I'm still going to get glory when it's all said and done. Yes, sir. Mm, my God. Yes, sir. And so then he comes back and says, watch this, watch this, watch this. When he says that, he comes back and reiterates the end at the beginning again. Mm -hmm. Now this is what drew us to this passage is verse 6. Because make no mistake, when God gives you an assignment, he will always give you the grace or the graces to do the assignment. God never calls you to do something that he does not equip you to do. Now watch Sister Melissa, when he calls you to do it, what you have been equipped with is not easily visible. Because when he calls you, watch this, at the beginning, Mario, you are not in your finished state. Therefore, Tasha, you have difficulty sometimes Understanding why he would choose you because when you look at Chris, watch this, when you look at the mistakes, your shortcomings, your issues, you feel like or it looks like based on those facts that you're not qualified. 
to carry out the assignment. Watch this, don't take it. But when he calls you, he already gives you something, graces, that will allow you to do what you need to do when it's time to do it. But we want all of the graces to show up in the beginning. <laughs> They're not. The graces show up as you move toward your destiny. But we want the graces to show up either while we're standing. No, no, no. The graces show up for an individual show that's on the move. And so then if I'm on the move towards my destiny, if I'm on the move towards our vision, is when I get to certain places that certain graces show up. Uh, let me say it like this. While I'm on the move, preacher, is when I get to a certain point that all of a sudden certain people show up. Oh, God, help me in this place. Uh, uh, let me help you in this place. See, see, can I use you, Jamie, for a second? Tito, can I use you? Watch this. It was no need of God sending y'all when we first got here because we weren't financially prepared to accommodate you. So he waited till we got in a position. Then he sent you. Oh God, help me in this place. I hope y'all hear. Because see, many of us, we won't go until we see everything laid out for us. No, no, no. We just start walking. And as we start walking, people start coming. The numbers start going up. Come on, deacons, y'all ought to bear with us. The basket got full. And it was then that then y'all start choking. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. And so then it wasn't that the others weren't good. Mm -mm. It's because where we were, that's all we could accommodate. Uh, Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. And so then there are some provisions, there are some graces uh, that God is not going to reveal to you uh, until you get into the place uh, where you can handle them. Good God Almighty. He's not going to show up. But you got to keep walking anyway towards the vision. And so then, make no mistake, God never gives you an assignment. Watch this. Even through the word that comes through the man of woman of God, he still will release the grace that goes with the assignment that the prophet or the prophetess releases upon you. Okay, let's 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 come on, watch this. We're ready. Let's go back. Remember what he said, verse two. Come on. Versatility, right? Watch this. So then, the coach is the one that can sit, look, and identify and say, you know what? You can go both ways. <laughs> the player doesn't come and say, yeah. It's up to the coach. <laughs> To see your abilities. Oh God, help me. And to put you in the position so that based upon what the coach sees in you, huh, that when I put you in the right position, huh, that what God put in you now has the abilities to work for the team. Oh God, help me in this place. And so then, watch this. Sometimes, Mary Jo, you can't see that you can do more than one thing. But the man of God, who God calls the overseer, who can see over, God help me in this place, can see that we can get more out of you than just having you up here. Because we understand, watch this, if the gift of the anointing of versatility is on the head, Yeah. 
said, I ain't never done that before. Huh? The last pastor, he didn't use me that way. Nobody ever asked me, Terrence, to lead a song. Nobody called me to be on Judah. I'm not quite sure if my voice can hold a tune. But God sent somebody who could recognize that if we put you in the right key, get you the right song, put you on the right circuit, then the song that you were saying would minister to the whole team. Tell your neighbor, I can do more than that. I can do more than that. I can do more than, I do more than pray. I, God called me to pray. I know he called you to pray. Praise God for praying. But then he also gave you something to do when you stop praying. Wait a minute. The Lord ain't revealed that. I know he ain't revealed it. He revealed it to the head. More than that. More than that. So, so then you... He gets to this verse 6. This one, I'm sorry, we're supposed to be here already. He says, this, this is what God is here. Listen, this, that's why I say God, man. God, man, this is what he said. He said, check this out. He said, it's a light thing. Now, Jay, man that poured out all his deficiencies, then stated a whole bunch of facts, then told God all his dilemmas, then expressed all his issues, Tried to even expound on the fact that he got some habits. Mm. Okay, we ain't gonna go down that road. Uh, Try to convince God based upon the fact that I still have some appetites. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, see, some of y'all couldn't get the wine we were serving because you was uh, hitting them coats for the fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so even with all those facts, we still try to convince God that we can't do it. But God still looked him dead in the eye and tell him, it's a light thing. It's a light thing. Come watch this. See, he comes back and tells him, watch this in verse 6. He says, it's a light thing that you should be my servant. Remember, that's what he was called for, to be my servant. To raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved Israel. That's the same thing he got through saying. In the other verse, I made you to gather Jacob and to bring Israel home, right? He says it again in verse 6. But then, make no mistake, he, when he says it's a light thing, it is because he believes that you can handle more than that. I know you're working 12 hours, but you can do more than that. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay, we don't want to talk back to you this morning. Right. <laughs> and so then, he really says, watch this, that you can handle more than just being my servant, restoring Jacob and gathering Israel. You can do more than that. You say, prove it. Because then he comes back and say in verse 6, I will also. And one word right there, Shakita. He says, also, which means in addition to what you already doing. Uh -huh. In other words, you can do more than that. Oh, God, help me in this place. I, I got children and we got this. And, mm -hmm, it's still a light thing. Oh, God, help me in this place. Um, my baby, I got to take my baby to the doctor and we got, uh, it, it's still a light thing. <laughs> don't, don't nobody really understand because they don't have this kind of issue. Mm -hmm. It's still, oh, y'all don't want to talk back to me. See, see everybody believes their predicament is special. Uh, everybody believes that their situation warns them for exemption status. Uh, I look at your neighbor and tell them your status is changing. <laughs> Oh my God, y'all missed that one. And so then he says, don't worry about this. And so then he says, I will also, in addition to what you already doing, oh God, help me here. He says, I'm going to give you for a light to the Gentiles. Now watch this. God is methodical in whatever he has the writer to write. Because watch this. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Help me. Slow down, get it. 
don't want no premature. Watch out, bro. So now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Now he says, Elder, initially, I've, got, I've called you to be my servant for Jacob and Israel. Yeah. Then you see here, he says, I'm going to also give you to the light, not to Jacob and Israel, but to the Gentiles. Yes, sir. You're going to be the sword for Jacob and Israel yeah. because they're in close proximity. Yes, they are where you are right now. Yeah. But also, I'm going to give you, I'm going to make you to be an arrow because there's some nations, there's some people, there's some, oh God help me in this place, there's some churches, there's some cities that are afar off that I need to release you to go into because I've well owed you, I've anointed you, and so I'm going to release you so you can go into places that are afar off. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I right here. I know this is your comfort zone. I know you know everybody in the hood. I know you know the big mama them. I know you that's your next no neighbor. But because I gave you the spirit of versatility, I just don't want you to be a sword. But I'm also making you an arrow. And so that's why he says, it's a light thing for you to gather Jacob. It's a light thing for you to preserve but also because you can do more than that listen, because I put versatility in your baby I'm going to release you to the Gentiles I'm going to send you places you ain't never heard about I'm going to give you some things you ain't even dreamed about because I understand that if I called you if I delivered you I put some in you that would allow you to Do more than that. The God may be. Come watch this. Y'all say, wait a minute, how you get that, Pastor? The last part he says, that thou mayest be my salvation until the end of the earth. Now, when he says until the end of the earth, first lady, what he's saying is, watch this. I'm setting you up to be a light for the nations so that my salvation, Jamie, becomes global. Making the what? Making the what? Making the what? So I'm setting you up because I want you to take the word that I put in you and take it globally. That's why I told you you're going to make the work. Oh my God, help me in this place. And so then God said, okay, then they might not get that. Tell them that they just need to start thinking bigger. Tell them this right here. Tell them go back to the exponential. Yeah, mm, my God. Tell them, remember, then I tell them to enlarge the tent. And I told them to enlarge the tent because there are some places, there are some people that the tent they're in now would not compensate for. Oh, God, help me in this place. Uh, that the place that they're in now will allow them to do what I want it done on a global level. Oh, God, help me in this place. And so then remind them that I told them a few years ago that I have a vouch. Oh, God, help me in this place. To make you high above the nations. To make you high in praise. To make you high in name and to make you high in honor. And so if I avouched from the beginning that I was going to make your name great, that I was describing you as being sought out, then you need to understand that I gotta put you in the position. Oh God, help me in this place. I can't let you just stay in this place because I made you versatile. I made you be able to deal with what's happening here, but I also put something in you that will allow you to take care of what's happening. 
More than that. More than that, Satan. Y'all stand to your feet.